Hey everyone, today I wanted to go ahead and talk about Chrono Odyssey as there's been a lot of discussion and a lot of chatter regarding the latest reveal gameplay for this game uh, where a lot of people are kind of expecting it to be and have compared it to something akin of a Monster Hunter-like open world MMORPG which is something of an amalgamation of a lot of things but I wouldn't necessarily blame them since there are some really interesting shots in the reveal trailer which you should be seeing uh, begin to loop uh, in the video uh, where they essentially kind of showcase it to be something closer to a Monster Hunter game. But then the interesting thing is that the trailer is kind of like so ambiguous and I think a little bit misleading that at the end of the day you do end up seeing some clear shots that it will be a more traditional MMORPG but at the same time, you also have plenty of shots from a third person perspective where it kind of looks like a traditional single player game. However, there are some massive engagements with some monsters that have pep have led people to believe or at the very least think without doing maybe some basic research that this could be a Monster Hunter like game. And based on the latest PlayStation blog, I'm going to be leaving a link in the description below for that. Uh, it doesn't necessarily seem to be the case, although again, some screenshots and maybe even gameplay clips might lead you to believe just that. Now, as of right now, we do know that this game will be a PlayStation 5 console exclusive. Uh, it doesn't necessarily seem like it's coming to Xbox right now at the very least. Uh, we also know that it's going to be coming to PC at a later date. There is no release date uh, slated for this, so uh, maybe 2024, maybe 2025. We, we don't necessarily know. Uh, they, even in the blog itself, they don't necessarily mention release date. So chances are it's not happening right now but it certainly looks interesting uh and it's coming from uh chrono studios they the blog kind of goes into further detail and mentions that at chrono studios uh, we are more than just developers we're avid gamers and who share a passion of epic titles and we believe mmorpgs are more than just games they are giveaways to unforgettable experiences formed through shared adventures and challenges our vision for chrono odyssey is to continue the legacies of beloved mmorpgs that have stood the test of time at first glance Chrono Odyssey may seem like your typical MMORPG, but that's what sets Chrono Odyssey apart from the rest is its unparalleled graphics made by the UE engine and our accumulation of expertise. We also have elevated the combat to new heights by incorporating the Chrono Time element, which serves as the core of gameplay in the universe, as well as real-time MMO content enjoyed by hundreds of players who provide dynamic social experiences unlike any other now usually for me personally it's always a red flag when the first thing that the developer can talk about is how pretty the graphics look um they're supposed to uh, we're in 2023 chances are if you're watching this video in the future uh whatever game you're watching uh, a trailer of going forward 2024 2025 they're supposed to look good that is why we have new generation consoles happening every you know half a decade or every decade or so uh, that's why video cards are so expensive that's why new versions come out all the time games are supposed to look good you're not impressing me by just visuals therefore that is kind of a given um, so I'm not usually, you know, the first out of the gate thing that the developer says, Hey, our graphics are pretty. Yeah. You're supposed to do that. That's the bare minimum at the very least when it comes to that um, aspect of it. Uh, moving on, they mentioned that the open world of Satara, as you step into the breathtaking world of Satara is an open world wilderness that transports you into a world that is, feels ever changing. Immerse yourself in a stunning scenery which transforms with each passing season with realisms that captures the essence of a living, breathing environment. Now, this is something that uh, if you have been watching uh, the recent uh, developer series uh, for you know developers working on Unreal Engine 4 and 5 um, this is something that like um, plenty of developers are going to be able to kind of tap into the power of the Unreal Engine where worlds are just easier than ever to kind of craft so every game will have some some random tag that says, um, you know, this game is the world's ever evolving, it's ever changing, you know, the weather pat patterns, et cetera, et cetera. And that is because it's built into the Unreal Engine on Zone. So developers are just tapping into the power that the engine provides. It's not anything like extremely unique 
on his very own. I don't want to sound too you know pessimistic about it, but these are just kind of like really basic stuff that they're talking about. And again, these are two opening statements regarding their game. Transitioning over, they talk about combat when they mention that combat is a thrilling experience that demands both unpredictably and unpredictably in control. Master the basic of attacks, defense, dodge, and swing switch seamlessly uh, between multiple weapons with real-time gain to the upper hand in battle. But be prepared for the unexpected. The enemy attack patterns are varied as they are deadly, adding any extra layer of tension to encounters, so stay on your toes, hone your skills, and embrace the excitement of combat. Choose from six distinct classes, swordman, ranger, sorcerer, paladin, berserker, and assassin. Uh, which does make me wonder why Swordsman and Assassin are not the same thing, as you embark on your epic journey. And don't forget to make your mark with a character customization options like gender and appearance, allowing you to express your unique personality and create personalized combat styles that is your own. Again, pretty generic stuff here. You know, combat, attack, defense, dodge. Yeah, that's a given, um, you know. I'm I'm surprised that they're not bragging about jumping as well, which is you know really basic stuff. Uh, the last two things that they talk about here is the power of time. Uh, they mentioned the enigmatic power of the chronotector holds the key to unlocking the full potential of your journey as you venture through the game's world. Uh, you'll come to understand the time, the symbiotic or symbolic relationship of Chrono, a force that not only drives the storyline, but also a pivotal role in combat and progression with the ability to manipulate time and space. You'll be able to stop time, rewind events, and explore other timelines and overcome seamlessly unsurmountable challenges. Now, usually time mechanics are tied to single player games. I'm not necessarily sure how they are gonna try to uh, wedge that into MMORPG, which is, again, a continuous game. Uh, um, so that's going to be probably the more interesting thing, how they're actually able to keep that alive throughout the existence of this game. And if it's not a feature that they end up ditching halfway through since they know they can't keep it up forever. Uh, because, like I said, um, you can like use rewind and stuff like that uh, for single player games, which, you know, again, you're not affecting other players. But if you're choosing to do that on your own, maybe it's just a story element type of thing where like you're actually going back in time and through a specific like chapter for a game as you're progressing so you're having very limited engagements with you know other players through that section of the game but i don't necessarily see how they could you know use that in like an open world type of format uh you know at the end of the day you know as an mmorpg that's just that doesn't necessarily coexist all that very well the last thing that they talk about is teamwork and take the lead so prepare to engage for epic battles along for hundreds of other players where strategy kills and teamwork determines the outcome whether you're facing against colossal beast or contempting their dominance against other factions you'll need to bring all your finded trusted allies to support in your quest for victory and when the time comes from confront the massive eltanius one of the most powerful bosses within the game world. Be sure to come prepare with the unique test of strength and will. Now, this one does look like a little bit of uh, Gore Magala and like a Kazu type of thing, which is really funny. Uh, but at the end of the day, it is an MMORPG. Some of the screenshots you should be able to see uh, there overlaid. Just kind of directly showcase that it's an MMORPG. But a lot of people were kind of fooled. I saw a couple of clips being passed on social media, Twitter, even the subreddit a little bit. Uh, people kind of clipping out the like the actual monster engagements and they look very much like you would expect something like a monster hunter game to look like but at the end of the day it is an mmorpg a lot of just players walking around and again the third uh, person aspect of it uh, when they do those very specific shots they are tricking people into believing that it looks like a single player game but when you actually see the camera fully panned out fully going back it does look like a more traditional mmorpg stuff we've seen with like warcraft final fantasy what was it 11 14 stuff like that and plenty of other mmorpgs the trick here is with mmorpgs now at the very least in 2023 presumably 2024 and 2025 is the monetization aspects final fantasy 14 i believe for however successful it became towards the later years um you know they struggled with you know, keeping, uh, uh, you know, people paying for the game. So they made a lot of like attempts to bring in new players by making certain sections of the game free, free trials up to like a certain level, stuff like that, because eventually people don't want to pay for a monthly subscription. And the way you keep these type of games alive is with a player base that is actually active. 
and you know they eventually have to monetize a lot of the stuff that you typically would see like in mobile games getting monetized and you know these games have to end up monetizing it in that same format so they usually cannot keep up and if the player base is not there they're not going to stay on for too long we've seen plenty of online live service games and mmorpgs kind of go the wayside because the player base doesn't support it because it's just not maybe as good as other ones, and it's a really limited field at the end of the day. If you're brand new to my channel, though, be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit the bell to receive notifications when the videos go up. And as always, thank you so much for watching. See ya.